Սիրելի բարեկամներ, այսօր ձեզ ներկայացնելու եմ նաև նյորկա հայ պոետ, արդիստ, լոլա կունտակ ջանի պատրաստած վիլմը, նվիրված հայ երեկ մեծ տաղանդաշատ արդիստներին, արշիլ գորկուն, ռուբեն նակյանին և Մարկոս գրիքորյանի Նա իր բանաստղծությունների ընթերցանության պանդես է եկել նյու յորկում, լոս անջելոսում, ռոդ այլնդում։ Անցնող 20 տարիների ընթացքում նա կազմակերպել է գրական երեկոներ նվիրված հայդասական պոհետներին։ Նա իր I read a poem entitled The Sex Life of Arshil Gorky by Soter Torejan and thought about you, a young man with a handsome face, moustache and jet black hair. Your arrival in New York and soon after your mercurial rise in the city's art scene, happiness with your wife and the birth of your daughters. And then, like Icarus, a rapid fall. In quick succession, cancer, the car accident, wife and children leaving you. And if these weren't enough, the fire destroying your entire studio and late paintings, taking your laughter away, your saudad and eventual suicide. Vostanik, you are labeled a European in one museum, an American born in Armenia in another arts institute. I keep reading about how you are menified everyone and everything, how you were considered a magus figure in New York City's art scene by 1934, how your own nephew falsified your letters. Your mural at Newark Airport was shrouded for years. Your art is scattered in museums from Lisbon to the Chicago Art Institute. Fifteen paintings were lost in a plane crash in 1962. I wonder, where is your heart buried? You were an old man with flowing white hair when I met you in the 80s at art openings on Madison Avenue. You'd arrived fashionably late, greeted by Gorky Gallery's owner Marcos and his wide, warm smile. Maybe you attended because you had exhibited with our shield in the 30s. You were always surrounded by your two sons, like a cardinal with delegations. When you went to the Gorky retrospective in 1981 at the Guggenheim, you had to stand real close to your friend's work because of your poor eyesight. And you were perhaps amazed, remembering your days as poor artists socializing at the Automat or at a cheap Armenian restaurant after he drew your portrait. Your inspiration came from Greek and Roman mythology, nymphs, dolphins and minotaurs, gentle flowing brushstrokes for some, coarse bronze abstract monumental pieces for others. Ruben, your artwork is all over the city, at the corner of 34th and 2nd, at Lincoln Center, in WPA archives and major museums nationwide, and yet you are nearly forgotten. A large piece of bread stuck on a canvas, another with dried out dirt in geometric forms, a moon shaped basket rising above an imaginary horizon, a chair on a platform crisscrossed and bordered by ropes, you a prisoner sitting in the middle of it all, and my twenty two year old self documenting with my single lens reflex and Kodachrome. Did I keep those pictures or did you get them all? I hope I kept the films, or at least some of the prints. I have a card with a picture of you and your daughter Sabrina, which you mailed after her death in 1986. She was nearly 30 then. 
You studied at the Accademia di Belle Arti in Rome, opened the gallery in Tehran, organized the first biennial there, championing local and popular art, experimenting with earth art before moving to the U.S. The last solo exhibit in your lifetime was just prior to Sabrina's death. You started an internal exile, finally moving your collection to Armenia, where thugs attacked you and precipitated your death. Marcos, your paintings are being auctioned by Christie's. MoMA and Nelson Rockefeller acquired your art in the 60s, but I never see them exhibited there. Thank you.